So we're back with issue number 64, and we're gonna go into the extra features. So we get cool moves. These are just a bunch of tips and tricks for players of games that are Hi, already my name out. Is Saul Wolf, and today I'm gonna show a cool move from one of my favorite PlayStation 2 games. The game is Mark of Creed. And in this cool move, I'm gonna show you Cree, how, is how it's pronounced <laughs> guards without getting caught in Vitaku Fortress. I always pronounced it Mark of Cry. From the beginning, get into first person mode and send Kuzo to the tree in front of you. There were a lot of, you know, there was a demo of this played in an earlier episode. And then send Kuzo to the next tree. There were a lot of PlayStation IPs. Uh, Things that Sony owned, or things that were what you want to do is you're going to send Kuzo right up here closely associated with Sony, that are resting on the branch, or PlayStation, and in doing so, which have essentially just been abandoned. Also. And it shows a big difference in the way that Sony, now, Nintendo, and branch. Microsoft all deal with their Never various IPs. Specifically, like well, you have Nintendo where they've like and especially through Smash Brothers right and stuff like that, the they go and they Fly bring Kuzo back Kuzo. their old IPs. Like, like who the hell gave a shit about Kid Icarus? And then they made like all the 3DSs around. So we're gonna make a Kid Icarus game. Oh, well, Smash Brothers put Kid, Iga Kid Icarus in there button. and all that. Sony, on the other hand, has gone through so many IPs that, like, honestly, I can't even remember a quarter of them. Like, this one here. Who the hell, like, thinks about this? And, you know, maybe it would have been Get something right that you here. would still see games released for now if Sony had just paid a little bit more attention. I mean, this was definitely a PS2-only series. So when the PlayStation 3 comes out, it's like, well, they moved on. I, I This studio here, I don't know what they did aside from this game. I'll look it up. Um, By defeating the guards, look it up in my phone. While I'm... You, you're going to save yourself a lot of heartache. Once you've done this, you're now free to explore the level and the challenges it brings you. Enjoy the game and have fun. Um, San Diego Studio. What else did they do? Oh, they do the MLB games. They had sports champions, but, you know, they they do sports games. Mark of Cree <laughs> was their first game. You had NBA games, then you had Pain, that weird, like, catapult yourself thing. Stick yourself in a ballista and throw yourself, try to knock shit over. PS3 game. High Velocity Bowling, MLB The Show. Medieval Moves, Deadman's Quest, that was a move game. Sports Champions, Little Big Planet Carn. So they do some other stuff. They did Drawn to Death. Okay. And MLB The Show is all they've done over the past several years. But the, the point still stands, though. That Sony has a lot of little IPs that they've come up with and then ran with them for a little bit and then Hi, just abandoned them. And today I'm going to show a cool move and in Freak Style. In this cool move, I'm going to show you Sony's been doing game consoles for Let me show you 30 years know. now. So they've developed a lot of individual IPs that are basically just forgotten about. Get your boost meter up. Remember the thought at the and time when Sony here, came out the with PlayStation 1 was that it it didn't really have the legacy that Nintendo right did here you can reach because a Nintendo the the NES or the Famicom or whatever the hell you want to call it what year did that and come out 80 right here's another great place to get your or, I'm gonna say let's say 84 was when the Famicom came out or the, or the NES came out and the PlayStation 1 came out in 1994. So, or 95, I guess. One of those two. 
And do some small so by the time the PlayStation if comes out, Nintendo has already been around for 10 years. And they've established right their the IPs. They had Kid Icarus, of course, a... like anyone cares. They had Legend of Zelda, you had Mario, of course, right you had here. Metroid, you had all of these big and important IPs and some less important IPs. Dude just glitched up a wall. Yeah, you had all these different IPs that Nintendo stuck with. I mean, they, of course, Nintendo had stuff that they didn't stick with, but they had these big names that you still see releases to to this day. And Sony had nothing. All they could do is get new stuff made or hopefully like see some stuff brought over. But we're not there anymore. In fact, three times as many years have passed for the PlayStation, uh, PlayStation brand as had for the Nintendo's video game brand by the time the PlayStation had released, so we are well past that. Oh, alright, we're... There's only two here. Alright, because I didn't, I didn't really like these anyway. Bulletins, there's never really anything in here. This is just some, like, event calendar for something that happened 21 years ago. PlayStation 2 now online. The PlayStation 2 was an online console, although it didn't launch that way. The network adapter and modem came out for it some years after the game launched. Now, it was obviously intended that, like, they put an expansion slot on the back of the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, because they were. Like, it was going to have a hard drive, and it was going to have a modem and a network adapter, and that was intended from the beginning, but it wasn't included in it. So by the time the PlayStation did launch its network adapter, you had to purchase it separately, although you could eventually get one that, that had that stuff integrated into it. But the PlayStation 2's network service was very disjointed. Microsoft really showed everybody how to do it when they were launched with Xbox Live, where... Like, all of the logins for the various, um, all of the logins for the various games were down to your Xbox Live login. So, you log in once, you can play any of the games. PlayStation 2 was not like that. <laughs> Every single game you played online on the PlayStation 2 had to have its own separate login, meaning username, password, all that kind of stuff. And... I mean, honestly, I didn't play that many games online on the PlayStation 2. SOCOM, EverQuest, Resident Evil, a few others. But, like, it it was not... It, it was an interesting, like, novel experience for me, but it wasn't the best because of the weird difficulties with logging in. Ratchet and Clank. A PlayStation IP, although not developed. Game great. A good story and killer graphics, sure. But more important is creating a fun, innovative world with lots of things to do and explore. Whoa, this is great! Oh, and by the way, the name's Ratchet. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. Hmm. Not a... The team that brought you Spyro the Dragon is back with their new game, Ratchet and & Clank, and they've created a world filled with a collection of weapons and gadgets that would make James Bond jealous. There are 35 different weapons and gadgets. The weapons you buy, and the gadgets, some of the gadgets you buy, some of them you find. Head price. Oh, jeez, look how young he is. A new one. What did you just say to me? R-Y-N-O. Rip ya a new one. Why, that's the most powerful missile launcher in the galaxy. 35 weapons and gadgets? Who wondered if they could name them all? You got the wrench, the pyrocitor, the agents of doom. There's the defense droids, the morph array. There's a bomb devastator blaster. Premium nanotech, super nanotech, uh, code bot, rare titanium. Hydro pack, hoverboard, zoomerator, sonic summoner, O2 mask. It's a lot easier to remember these when you worked on the game for a couple of years. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess I guess even they can't. 
We'll let them off the hook. That's a lot of weapons. Obviously, a lot of work went into coming up with all these items. Well, the design process starts with the designers and the rest of the team brainstorming about what weapons would just be cool to like, hold in your hand, what, what could you blow stuff up quickly with, what would be a very thrilling, visceral um, type of weapon. And so we, we come up with 50 to 60 different ideas, and then from those we focus on the ones that we think have a strong gameplay value and that the players will enjoy the most. It's always function first. We really like to think a lot about what the player is going to have fun doing and what's going to be really useful for them. We've got 40 people in the company who are just coming up with really wacky ideas, and designers end up filtering out the ones that have the most potential, and then we prototype them see which ones really do work well, and then we come up with our final set of gadgets. In terms of gadgets, my favorites are the swing shot, where you can swing sort of like Tarzan from one swing shot target to the next, and it's a very acrobatic feel to it. Uh, I also like the Trespasser, which is a um, special device that allows you to hack into locations. One that's very popular among most of the people who've played this is the Visibomb. Mm. The Visibomb is a guided... Yeah, the weapons thing. You get to that was like the bomb from the bomb Ratchet and Clank's so unique thing was that the they had so many different weapons that really cool. all of them were really creative. And, and it's cool I'd weapons. say that... You'll have to be on the lookout for the currency in the world of Ratchet and Clank. Old bolts that are scattered around the levels. The bolts in this game are money. This uh, Nuts and bolts and gears... And these are used to purchase various things throughout the game. There, the design that we have is fairly complex. There are a lot of things that you can buy. Let's go, buddy. I ain't got all day. Furthermore, there's another gadget that uh, will help you collect more bolts. The unique this weapons will help you make even more money. I mean, it was a very big thing in Ratchet and Clank, but I'd say this concept so even carried forward into Insomniac's PlayStation 3 generation with. Um, even if they weren't doing Ratchet and Clank, they did do Resistance Fall of Man. That's a first-person shooter, but there were a lot of unique weapons in that game as well. So it's like, it's Insomniac's thing, I guess. Of course, Insomniac was closely associated with Sony for a number of years, but they weren't owned by Sony until a few years back. Probably one of the better purchases that Sony had made. Like, honestly, like, by the time they bought Insomniac, I had thought that Sony had owned them for years. Although, they did do that Xbox One game that no one remembers, including me, apparently. I would say that I'll repeat something that I've said a bunch of times while going through these demos, that these demo discs, was that the in the previous generation, the N64 and the PlayStation 1, there, you if you wanted 3D platformers, generally you were looking at the N64 for that because you had the big releases there. You had like uh, Mario 64 and you had Banjo Kazooie and stuff like that. But there were a few uh, 3D platformers that were good on the PlayStation One. It just took longer for it to really develop because the controller is not quite as well suited for it and the hardware is not quite as well suited for it, but they could eventually figure it out. You got like Croc and, and stuff like that, but once you got into the PlayStation 2 generation, everything flipped. I would say that the PlayStation 2 was where you went if you wanted 3D platformers, because you would, I mean, you had Ratchet and Clank, you had Jack and Daxter, you had Sly Cooper, you had a bunch of other things that I'm not remembering because I'm not a huge 3D platformer fan, but they were definitely better on the PlayStation 2. Jet 20 X Jet X20, what is this? It's fast. It's raging. There's just some intensity to it. You're just like, oh, no way, you know. Jet X20 is is meant to be sort of the next wave in in water racing games. I've never given a crap about <laughs> water racing games. I'm not a huge racing fan to begin with, but... I mean, I remember Wave Race. Uh, was to give the gamer the sense of freedom 
uh, sense of large worlds, sense of multiple paths. And Wave Race, I'm not talking about the N64 game, I'm talking about the Game Boy game. So it's, it's pulling off multiple tricks. Remember my brother was all into freaking Wave Race. He's like, Wave Race, it's such an awesome game. Blah, 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 blah. We're trying to push the, the I'm like, yeah, oh, okay, I played it, like, yeah, I guess it's alright. <laughs> tend to be uh, circuit based wave race 64 comes uh, out around a track. and it uh, like it wowed just because of the, the graphics and it like it really did take advantage of the kind of like the hardware of the n64 in order to produce something that looked um, we can, we can run amazingly run good for the time like the water effects looked fantastic the for their era it was really important for us to have not quite as good as this but i mean the hardware is very different and then other but even as far as you get um, a layer of physical even if the graphics weren't as good I would say that Jet well Moto was a better game than Wave Race 64 so when you lay over didn't look as side, good because of PlayStation uh, especially when it comes to water effects because Jet Moto wasn't a water racing game but it like sort of land and water racing game kind of weird if they look like jet skis People but they're are like hover bikes standard tricks so why not raise the so the playstation system. one didn't have the best compass, hardware in order to of, have sports, like motocross, the kind of animations uh, that would make uh, auto rendering like look good that would be uh, uh like vertex based attributes of each one um, animations create, where you can it, move the individual vertices uh, of a mesh we tried to creating like a sort of nice looking waves and all that kind of, of stuff of what and it couldn't do like, programmable pixel the shaders so you couldn't make waves world. in that way take it one step further, whereas the n64 had the better hardware uh, to be able to handle that kind of thing really ever be able to do we're looking at so you had wave race 64 where you had these nice waves that move up and down and move around your animations with your Jet ski and all that kind of stuff. They actually have and the PlayStation had a flat plane <laughs> that you rode over that was a single color. And it had textures that made it look like waves passing over top. And it looked way worse. So, like, at a quick glance, Wave Race 64 looked better and was better. But as far as actual gameplay well, goes, we really I felt, always felt like Jet Moto was better than Wave Race 64. Really I'm talking like about other really games really instead of this one, because I've never played this. <laughs> Maybe I'll run across the demo, and it turns out I have played it before, but... I don't remember this. It's very fun, it's very challenging. The tricks are just... I would say that Sony kind of learned their lesson with that when it came to the PlayStation 2. As much as... Some developers gave the PS2 crap for the complexity of its development environment. I would say that Sony built the PlayStation 2 based on what they had heard from feedback from developers on the PlayStation 1. Well, what do you want to do? Well, we want to do vertex-based animation. But the PlayStation 1 wasn't that good at it. Some developers could manage it, others couldn't. So what do we do? Well, we put vector units in there to accelerate that to make that work a lot better stuff like that unfortunately some developers just had a hard time getting their heads wrapped around it all right we're back in the same thing uh we're back in the vault there's not a lot of additional stuff that was only what 18 and a half minutes and i've been babbling like a moron for a while download station wait did i look at these i'm not going to copy any of these because i don't own any of these games I didn't even know there was a Men in Black 2 game. <laughs> Dynasty Warriors 3. I don't own that anyhow. Anyway, I guess that was the second half of was issue 64 of the official US PlayStation Magazine demo disc. Thanks for watching.